Oh, really? A flat tire? How come we have self-driving cars before airless tires? Since moving here, I've had a flat tire twice. That's like once a month. But airless tires seem to have been on the horizon since I was a kid. A younger kid. But we still haven't really seen any on the market. So where are they? Why hasn't this supposedly simple concept taken off? Because it seems simple, right? Just fill the tire with something structural instead of air. Airless tires or non-pneumatic tires actually do exist. Companies like Michelin and Bridgestone have been working on them for years. The idea is solid. A tire that doesn't need air means no flats, no blowouts, no shaking pressure and no annoying stops on the side of the road. You'd think they'd be a no-brainer by now, but the reality is airless tires come with a few technical issues that have slowed their rollout. Damn, I'm on fire today. You know how performance parts are usually much lighter, and the first part to be upgraded on someone's build is rims, axles, flywheels, pistons, basically anything that has to spin. Rotating parts store a lot of energy, which is good in some cases, for example in your flywheel, but it also takes a lot of energy to get them spinning. You already know this, just intrinsically, even if you've never really thought about it. It's a lot harder to start and stop a bowling ball than it is a ping pong ball. And you don't really need all this energy stored in your wheels. It's better to just not spend the energy at all. And the gyroscopic effect is also coupled with the weight of a spinning object. So it's a lot harder to change the direction of a heavy wheel than a light one. You can imagine how this affects your steering and general handling. And you might have already guessed, replacing literal air with rubber is a lot heavier. Then there's heat, which is honestly a huge challenge. The tires heat up from the friction with the road and from the constant compressing and decompressing. In traditional tires, the air acts like a built-in cooling system, letting the heat disperse. Airless tires, not so much. They trap a lot more heat because they're dense and solid. And they also heat up faster because there's a lot more material that needs to be compressed. That's fine if you're driving at slow speeds or short distances, but imagine going on a long road trip at highway speeds. Airless tires would heat up and the extra heat make them wear down faster. Honestly, the more I look into it, the more I realize just how genius airfield tires are. Think about it, they create both structural stability and impact absorption out of literally thin air. All while being cheap, lightweight and easy to adjust. It's just unexpected punctures that suck, leaving you stranded in the rain changing tires on the freeway. By now, I know all BMW drivers are screaming at their screen, what about run flat tires? Yeah, they do exist, but you mostly see them on German luxury cars as an option. Run flat tires are actually a pretty clever concept, but they have some downsides. There are two main types, each with its own quirks. First, there's the self-supporting run flat. This type has extra thick sidewalls, so when the tire loses air, the rubber itself can carry the car's weight. But this comes with some of the same problems we talked about in airless tires. These self-supporting run flats are heavy, loud, and they tend to be more expensive. Plus, they don't absorb impacts as well as regular tires. They make for a rougher ride. Then there's the auxiliary supporter run flats. These are more common in military and government use. They're basically a regular tire with a smaller airless tire inside that can keep you rolling even after a blowout. These are heavier too, but they don't rely on the stiff sidewalls, so the ride quality is usually better than the self-supporting type. So while run flats are handy in a pinch, they're not without compromises. They add convenience, but sacrifice comfort and cost quite a bit more and they're much harder to repair with some shops just outright denying you service. But all this doesn't mean airless tires aren't useful. They're just not the right fit as our main everyday tires. I've seen them in use on some small low speed forklifts and things like that, so the market definitely exists, but I don't think we'll ever see them in our everyday cars. 